Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video where we're going to discuss the theoretical foundations of cost effectiveness analysis, where we're going to go and ground a lot of the cost effectiveness work in economic theory. Well, it's just going to be intermediate microeconomics, but in general, I just want to go and show that the solution concept that is used in the context of economic evaluation and health technology assessment, where people go and use decision trees and Markov models, is a valid solution and it is a good way people should be going and making decisions because this is in line with what we should expect from economic theory. So without further ado, let's go. So when we do cost effectiveness analysis, regardless of the model, we need to choose what rule defines our decision of whether to invest in a technology or not. This rule in an applied setting is usually defined as lambda which must be greater than or equal to this incremental cost effectiveness ratio that we go and we have, where lambda here is a constant. In the case where we have negative ratios, uh, the net monetary benefit or net health benefit is gonna be used instead, um, which is defined by these two equations here. What I hope to do in this video, as previously stated, is to go and show that the practice of cost effectiveness analysis in an applied sense with decision trees and Markov models is very much grounded in standard objective problems and is not just um, you know people just going and hacking out models on paper even though that may be what it is but it is a economically valid way of going and making these decisions and is in line uh, with a lot of the problems that we solve in economics so let's first derive this cost effectiveness threshold. And I'm going to argue that this cost effectiveness threshold comes from this cost minimization problem that we go and we have, again, you know, just plugging and chugging, we put in the Lagrangian and we take our first order condition. And if we go and we arrange, rearrange this first order condition, right, with, which is no problem, we get our net health benefits, right? That's the equation that we go and we get. And we can easily from this equation derive our threshold formula being defined as follows, which is equal to the ratio of the marginal costs and marginal utility from health. In a discrete setting, which is you know what we go and we see on the regular, um, this is just gonna be the change in costs all over the change in effectiveness. Notice how I am being uh, a little bit uh, lazy with my notation, where I'm defining uh, change in effectiveness being the same as a change in utility. Um, same thing could be could be here you know it just depends on what you want your constraint to go and be so we see that this thing here works very nicely in terms of going and deriving our net health benefits formula right that comes from the inverse problem so that's a utility maximization problem subject to a budget constraint the lagrangian for this problem you know is defined as follows where if we take our first order condition we get a very interesting result we're going to go and be sneaky here and we're going to find our mu here to be one over lambda, right? So the reason why we're able to go and do that is because the, our multiplier is just a scalar and we're able to go and define it in terms of a ratio of another type of scalar. So this solution concept still goes and holds here. So we have here from our utility maximization problem, the net health benefits here. Okay. So we saw those two things um, in terms of deriving our cost effectiveness threshold, net monetary benefit and net health benefits. So why is this useful? This goes and addresses a very powerful argument, which is you know debated a lot in uh, the public health circles and economic evaluation and health technology assessment uh, circles about the equity efficiency trade-off. And the economist solution to this problem is that we just need to go and adjust our objective planner's problem to go and match the objectives of we, how we see society or how we see our benevolent social planner. So if it's just a matter of debate over what objective function to go and use. And that makes the problem very, very, very uh, closed form, though it's uh, you know not very satisfying for some, but it means that we're able to incorporate this idea of fairness into our problem here. This idea is you know further expounded upon right in Adam Wagstaff's 1991 paper uh, qualities and the equity efficiency trade-off. This is actually the first place where I've seen this uh, suggestion be made. I'm just going and taking it and making it explicit. So um, I hope this video goes and helps and shows how we go and we ground a lot of this cost effectiveness modeling in uh, economic theory, right? Which is you know just a couple of intermediate economics problems. I hope this video was enjoyable. Take care.